led your people through difficult seasons since creation. God, we would pray today that you would engulf us in your grace, that we may serve as instruments of your peace. Help us to be the first to forgive, slow to anger, and generous in our support of those in need. In your name we pray, peace and amen. Begin our prayers together with celebrations. Here are the birthdays. September 26, Andorra Nicholson. The 27th, John Koppelmeyer. On the 1st of October, David Gross. And on the 2nd of October, the twins, Grant Lippard and Lawrence Lippard. Uh, in terms of anniversaries, uh, in, in case you didn't know from last week, last week, uh, David and Janice Gross, cele uh, David and Janice Comer, celebrate their anniversary. I keep marrying people. Uh, Neil, uh, Neil and Louise Gross, Stephen and Emma Chestnut, Terry and Diane Hamby. And um, those are the celebrations I have. Are there any others that you would like to mention? Well, let's look at our concerns then. Um, we remember Rachel uh, Lackey and her family. We prayed last week and, and we'll pray today again for the principals of our schools in our state and around the country who are on the front lines bearing all the anxiety and anger you know, concerning pandemic precautions, um, as well as all the burden of getting school started as well. Uh, we remember uh, Peggy Waugh um, with endometrial cancer. Uh, we remember, I just heard that David was going to be, Comer was going to be here today, but he thinks he has shingles. So uh, let's pray for David. Um, there's a beautiful prayer that Louise Gross brought. Uh, a woman she cares for has this prayer for the pandemic that's really wonderful. It's on the board in the back if you want to take a look at it when you leave. Um, are there any others that we would like to raise for our prayer concerns? Yes. Um, this is what suicide prevention on, and um, I think it's just a good time to, the, the best way we can um, prevent suicide is to be aware that um, people are considering it all around us, that it's something that some people can't control. Uh, sometimes it has, you know, their minds or... Um, controlled by their biology. Um, other times they're con controlled by substances. But um, there are things we can do about it. The biggest thing is to know that, uh, to be aware of the people around us and to uh, reach out to those that need it. Well, what a beautiful way to lead us into prayer in this suicide prevention month. Thank you. Any others? In the back there. Um, Mom, out the cancer is back. Um, oh no, Lee's mom, the cancer is back. It'll be her third round, so she'll start chemo again in about a month. Um, but the doctor is telling her it's going to be a chronic condition, so it's just a matter of treating it as it pops back up for the rest of her life. Well, what a courageous and beautiful person she's been on her path of cancer. Thank you. We'll redouble our prayers. Yes, Linda. Um, this past Sunday, uh, friends of ours, um, Lee and Helen Hallfield, who own Jenkins Cleaners, their 41-year-old daughter died suddenly. 
Um, they're very, very private people. I don't know if it was suicide. I don't know anything. But uh, I'm sure it's extremely painful. Was it Catherine? Yes. Well, we'll remember their fam their, the family. Thank you, Linda. begin a new journey, but also coming from the VA, kind of banking off of the suicide awareness. That, that's a really big population of suicide events in our, our veteran population. And one thing we learned in the VA is that, uh, you know, offering phone numbers for support lines is great, but sometimes that's not enough. And sometimes if you know someone's struggling, you need to ask. You need to be kind of upfront and ask if they've had any suicidal ideations. That's not gonna cause them to commit suicide. And that's one of the biggest things that come out and said can help someone is to be upfront and ask and help get them to a provider that can help them. So just keep that in mind if you come up to someone like that. Thank you, Emma, and thanks for bringing the concerns of the veteran community in terms of the suicide you know, problem. Uh, and uh, congratulations and blessings on your new start in you. your branching out on your own. Thank you. Any others? Well, let's take a moment in silence to lift these and other concerns to God, and then I will, I will continue our prayers. O oh God of our years and days, help us give thanks for every day and every year of life. O oh God, fall has come with a slight chill in the air and a promise of leaves turning to color. We thank you for the constancy of the seasons and for their beauty. We give thanks, O oh God, for the children and youth in our midst here at church, around the community. They draw from us joy and fill us with love. We pray for our nation in its ongoing agonies of division. We pray for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated and for all those sick with COVID. We pray for medical personnel in hospitals overwhelmed with patients and their needs. We pray for ourselves, for out of the same mouth, James says, comes both blessing and curse. Fill our mouths with blessing and quell the curse in our minds and tongues. Fill us, O oh God, with the joy of your salvation, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And help us pray as if for the first time the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
Good morning. We've got a lot of scripture to read this morning. <laughs> Today's scripture lesson comes from Numbers 22, 21 through 28, and 23, 5 through 8. And then we'll turn to Luke 6, 27 through 28. So starting with Numbers. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials of Moab. God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, so the donkey turned off the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards, with a wall on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it scraped against the wall and scraped Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck it again. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you, that you have struck me these three times? The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you must say. So he returned to Balak, who was standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab, Moab. Then Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, Balak has brought me from Aram, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? And then turning to Luke. But I say to you that listen... Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you.
Balaam and his talkative donkey, the power of blessing. Today I begin a series of sermons called Peculiar Treasures, Personalities from the First Testament. Why do I use the word First Testament to describe the Old Testament? Because it helps restore the value to the Old Testament. There are many Christians who use the phrase old to mean lesser. The most important decision of the second century church was to be a people of two testaments and not just one. There was a wealthy shipbuilder in the church at Rome named Marcion, and he wanted to throw out the whole Old Testament. But the church said no. Both testaments are holy scripture. The first testament, after all, was the Bible of Jesus. Now to the phrase, peculiar treasures. That's us. With an emphasis both on peculiar and treasure. In Exodus 19.5, King James Version, God says, Ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for for all the earth is mine. We are a peculiar people. Yes, we are, and treasured. And God uses peculiar people, even us, to bless the world. Now to Balaam and his talkative donkey. How many of you have heard this story? There are a few out there. Uh, We could call this a gospel of Mr. Ed. If any of you are old enough to remember the old TV show with Mr. Ed as the talking horse, Or if you're younger in this crowd, uh, we we might call it the Gospel of Shrek with his talking donkey named Donkey. In today's text, Balaam's donkey talks on behalf of God and God's people. We are fascinated, aren't we, with just the idea of animals who can talk? Maybe in heaven, the animals talk. Now, as I tell you the story, don't be afraid to laugh. In the movie, Oh God, as some of you remember, George Burns says, God is like a comedian playing an audience who's afraid to laugh. Sometimes truth and humor go together, right? The story goes that Balak, the king of Moab, was getting nervous about the growing strength of Israel. He wants to declare war on Israel, but feels... Like most kings, he needs a little help from the gods. So he summons Balaam, a prophet known for his power to curse and to bless. What you bless is blessed, the king said to him, and what you curse is cursed. So go, he said, and plant a big fat curse on Israel so we can conquer them. That's loosely translated from the Hebrew. God, however, tells Balaam not to go, saying, do not curse this people because I have blessed them. Balaam at first refused the king's request, but then relented, but said to himself that he would only do what God commanded him to do. So Balaam set off on his donkey along with his two servants. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, standing in the middle of the road, a sword drawn in his hand, or her hand. Who's to know? Balaam doesn't, Balaam doesn't see the angel, but the donkey does, and makes a sharp 90 degree turn into the field. Maybe animals see things that we don't. I bet they do. Balaam gets angry and strikes the donkey to get it back on the road. Then they came to a narrow path through a vineyard with a stone wall on each side of the path. The angel appeared again. When the donkey saw the angel, he skittishly tried to move around the angel and ran into the stone wall, which ended up with Balaam's foot getting crushed. Balaam's not too happy about that, of course. He gets even madder and thrashes the donkey again. We do not like Balaam very much at this point. 
As he went on, a third time the angel appeared. Have you ever noticed in humor and jokes there's always a pattern of threes? <laughs> well, this time the path was so narrow there was no way to go around the angel. The donkey, no fool, did not rush into a field, he did not run into a wall, he just plopped right down in the middle of the road. Balaam began beating the donkey again. Suddenly, miraculously, the donkey is given the power of speech and begins speaking in fluent Hebrew. The donkey said, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Balaam is so perturbed, he doesn't seem to notice that the donkey has begun to talk. It's like it's an everyday occurrence. He replied to the donkey, Because you've made a fool of me, that's why. I ha if I had a sword in my hand, I would slay you. Then the donkey replied again in perfect Hebrew, Am I not thine donkey upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? Balaam answered meekly, No. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and now he saw the angel with the sword. In stark fear, he fell on his face. Then the angel told him that the donkey had in fact saved his life, that if the don donkey hadn't balked, his sword would have ended his life. And then he told Balaam to proceed on, but to say only what the Lord told him to say. And so it happened. Balaam did not curse Israel, but blessed Israel. The moral of the story, never beat a donkey who balks and talks, for he will make a donkey out of you. No, the real meaning is what Balaam said to the Moabite king. How can I curse what God has not cursed? Balaam instead blessed Israel with a blessing God put in his mouth. God has blessed and is blessing the whole world and everyone in it. And we, God's peculiar people, are called to bless all people with God's blessing. We cannot, must not, curse those whom God has blessed one of the most powerful things in the world is the power of blessing. And one of the most damaging things is the withholding of blessing. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Luke, as you heard, Jesus says we are to bless everyone, even our enemies. Words have the life-altering power to bless and to curse, don't they? So may God help us use our words as he would use, she would use our words. Parents have the wonderful and terrible power to bless their children or to withhold blessing. Tragically, many withhold blessing because maybe they themselves had not been blessed as a child. I think that people in this world have the predominant sense of either being among the blessed or the unblessed. The blessed child or the unblessed child. The Bible traces it all the way back to the beginning. Cain, believing his brother Abel was blessed and not he, so he killed him. Or look at Jacob, the blessed, and Esau, the unblessed. Or Joseph, who certainly thought he was the blessed son. And the daughters, they were way down the line of blessing. And what about the parable of the prodigal son? The younger son felt blessed and therefore felt free to leave home. And then the elder son, what did he do? He stayed home thinking he had to earn his father's blessing and slaving to do it. But the 
father said, what did the father say to the elder? All that is mine is yours. God's desire is that all God's children be blessed and that they experience this blessing. To the unblessed children of the world, we're called to bless them with the blessing of God, to love them with the blessing of God. What they've not experienced in life, we give to them. In short, we are called to welcome them to the party of grace. You know, I think, I think some pe- there are three kinds of people. Uh, the first kind don't think there's a party at all of grace. The second thing, the second group thinks there's a party, but they surely don't belong. And the third group know there's a party and know that they have been welcomed. But all God's children are invited to the party and we are called to roll out the red carpet and welcome everyone to God's house of blessing. God's feast of grace. So let us go to one another and bless each other. Let us go out into the highways and byways, as the parable of the great feast says, and invite everyone to come to the party, to the house of blessing. And let us sing that song we have sung. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hope and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace, here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. The grace to risk something big for something good. The grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen.